What's going on people? Welcome back to my channel. Welcome to another review after another loss. Chelsea nil, Brentford two. We've handed three points again in a West London derby, but whatever, it is what it is. Time to back out the Maggie again. Same shit every week. Same shit every fucking week and it never changes. Except that the lineup, the lineup manages to get considerably worse. Lampard, like, I, I didn't think things would get worse under Graham Potter. I remember going on streams and saying it would be vibes, everything would be fine, and all of this crap. No, it's managed to get worse. It has actually managed to get worse. I, I don't even know how you could make things worse than Graham Potter, but big up to you, Lampard, because you did it. You did it. It's just dreadful. Thankfully, City beat Arsenal. There's something to celebrate. Arsenal, hold that. You dirty European trophy dodging bastards. You've flopped the league for another season. And you're going to win as much as we did in our worst season. Hold that, you pricks. Other than that, it's just dreadful. We played like crap. We set up like crap. What was Lampard thinking with that lineup? Let's have a serious conversation. Because what the fuck was that? I thought the Real Madrid lineup was bad. But, but that crap, like fucking hell, I don't know what they're running about, but whatever. Gallagher and Sterling is the best attack you have for us. Like, are you shitting me? Gallagher and fucking Sterling. You have Jao Felix on the bench, you have Aubameyang on the bench, you have Mudrik on the bench, you have Madweki on the bench. You haven't even put Chucky Mecca on the bench, by the way. Yet yeah, Gallagher and Sterling is the best you had. As for Equator at right wing back, I don't know what we're thinking with that one either. The guy's got no legs, respectfully. Big up to Asby, Chelsea legend, all of that. I won't say nothing negative about him as a, as a person or in terms of his passion and his care for the club. But as a player, he's past it. He's past it. We've got to be real about it. He ain't it. He ain't it. He played him over Ruben. I, I don't understand that. I don't get it. And we set up to fail. You fail to prepare, you prepare to fail. I remember my maths teacher said that to me. Big up Mr. McIntosh every time. We didn't, we didn't prepare to win. We prepared to try and draw. And we lost. Silly own goal to concede, whatever. We were defensively solid, I guess. But you set up that way. You didn't set up to attack. Going forward, we had nothing. Everything went through N'Golo Kante. Big up to Kante, by the way. I said I had my reservations about giving him a new contract and I wanted to wait until he'd come back. Give him the contract. Give him the contract. That guy is the real deal. He hasn't changed a bit. He hasn't changed a bit. That surgery, that time off has done him all the world of good. Keep him in the job. Keep him in the job. He's that guy. Nothing negative against N'Golo Kante. Everybody else, sloppy as hell. Even the likes of Thiago Silva and Enzo, even they were sloppy. Even they were poor. Sloppy passes left, right and centre. Not just from them. Chalaba, Kovacic, he was wank today. Sterling, poor again. But you know what? The thing with Sterling is, what did you set up to do with him? Sterling up top. Really? In, in big 2023, this is what we're doing. We are doing Raheem Sterling up top. What? You have a literal striker on the bench. We even played better when he came on. Opera Mudrik came on and we had some fucking actual attacking play. We were pushing the ball forward better. We were making more chances. Like, what the fuck are we doing? What are we doing? Be real about it. Because we react. We react all the time. We reacted to going 1-0 down and then we made attacking changes. And then we looked a little bit better. But it was too little too late. And by the way, Opera would be doing so much more for us in that cameo if we'd actually utilised him. Graham Potter, you are a fucking criminal for not using him and for forcing us to watch Kai Havertz up top for the last four months. Because he looked sharp. He was making the right decisions. It was just the finishing wasn't there. And the finishing wasn't there because of a lack of sharpness. I take back what I said about him being sharp. His movement was good. His movement was good. He got into the right positions, but the finishing wasn't there because of a lack of sharpness. We, need to, we should have been giving him a lot more game time because he probably would be offering us a lot more at this point. He might have more goals. That's our best goal scorer. Everyone wants to tell me he's washed. He's not washed. He needs opportunities. We haven't given him opportunities. It was too little too late. Too little, too fucking late. Same thing as always. As always. 
We never improve, we never get better, we never change, we always just regress and go back into our shells. Now we're talking about Chelsea potentially being a relegation fight. If it weren't for Thomas Tuchel's 11 points, we would be 18th. We would be in the relegation zone. Our form, since Thomas Tuchel's got sacked, has been genuine relegation form. We are playing like a team that should be going down. These players are on the beach. This is the number one thing I was worried about when we got knocked out against Real Madrid, that these players would switch off and they've all switched off. They've all switched off. They've all gone to the beach and this is fucking pathetic. Pathetic performance from all of them. We're going to go to Arsenal and do the same thing. Then we got Forrest in a relegation six-pointer. They just beat Brighton 3-1. We got absolute. We got our cheeks clapped by Brighton when we played them two weeks ago or under a week ago, whatever it is. Then we go to Bournemouth away, an away day that we don't like. We've never liked it. And then after that, Man City away, Man United away, Newcastle at home. The last three games of the season. Do you even think we're getting a point in that? I don't. I don't. This shit is embarrassing. This shit is more than embarrassing. It's fucking pathetic. None of these guys care about what, where we're at right now. They're all on the beach. And it's probably going to get worse. It is probably going to get worse from here. Because I, I don't know where we get our next point from. I don't know. Even Forrest Bournemouth, I don't know where we get our next point from. This is just pathetic. This is crap. This is not going to get better. This is not going to change. And I, I don't know where we go from here. I want to try and tell myself, tell all of you, that we're going to put the final nail in the coffin on Arsenal. I don't think we're doing it. I hope we're doing it. This is the only thing I have hope for between now and the end of the season. But I don't think we're doing it. I don't think we're doing anything. This isn't Chelsea. This is just the biggest shell of a club that I've ever seen. It's Fulham Broadway FC. This is just shit. Everything about Chelsea right now is just shit. And if we could fourth for every match right now and just go to the end of the season, I'd do that. But we can't do that. We can't do that. It's just dead. It's just dead. <sighs> Big up everybody that's locked in though. Like, subscribe, all of that. Hit the bell notification button. We'll be live tomorrow, 2.30, 3 p.m., something like that, just to go through this fucking loss again. <sighs> I don't know why I do this to myself. Why did I even come? Miss City dunking on Arsenal for this shit. Literally for this shit. I, I, I don't fucking get it, man. Like, subscribe. <sighs> I was going to say up the Chelsea, but whatever. Up the Chelsea, and yeah, we're out. Big up, big up.